Stephen Schwartzman, the CEO of Blackstone, recently warned that the hike in prices due to the ongoing energy crisis is likely to cause social unrest worldwide. In a statement, Schwartzman said, we are going to end up with a real shortage of energy. And when you have a shortage, it's going to cost more and probably going to cost a lot more. You are going to get very unhappy people around the world in the emerging markets in particular, but in the developed world, what happens then is you've got real unrest. This challenges the political system and it's all utterly unnecessary. Welcome to the Savvy Few, where we keep you up to date with what's going on in today's economy. If you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and bell notification so you can stay up to date on the world's economy. The comments were made in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, where Schwartzman was attending the annual investment conference at the Ritz-Carlton alongside an array of rich and powerful individuals. Schwartzman attended the conference for his third time, paying tribute to his existing Saudi contracts. He was present for Trump's 2017 state visit to Riyadh, where he unveiled a significant investment deal worth up to $20 billion with the Saudis as an informal advisor to the Trump administration on the economy and trade accords. After the Capitol incident, Schwartzman parted ranks with Mr. Trump. However, he maintains a business tie with the Saudis, who have long been investors in Blackstone funds. He alluded to the environmental movement's financial restrictions on oil and gas firms, claiming that their inability to borrow money could stifle energy supplies, resulting in social and political instability. He and his fellow panelists traded barbs on whether they'd invest in gold, dollars, euros, or bitcoin. Last week, the prices of U.S. oil climbed to a seven-year high of $85 per barrel, and according to AAA, Gas prices are continuing to rise, nearing $3.40 per gallon. And it's not just the United States experiencing sky-high prices. Europe and Asia have seen the same price of natural gas soar in recent weeks, causing many factories to shut down. Schwartzman cited that part of the problem lies in the increased difficulty for fossil fuel companies to raise enough money to keep production going. With a decrease in production, the industry will be unable to meet its supply. Furthermore, the current focus on ESG is creating a credit crunch amidst oil and gas companies. ESG, or environmental, social, and governance, is a process in which investors are increasingly using non-financial aspects in their analytical process to identify significant dangers and growth prospects. Companies are increasingly making disclosures in their annual or separate sustainability reports. However, ESG measures are not generally part of mandated financial reporting. The Sustainability Accounting Standards Board, or SASB, the Global Reporting Initiative, or GRI, and the Task Force on Climate-Related Financial Disclosures, or TCFD, are among the organizations working to develop standards and define materiality to make it easier to incorporate these factors into the process. But for the time being, these environmental, social, and corporate governance investing principles have prompted major financial institutions to sell their oil and gas assets. According to Schwartzman, this has made it difficult for the sector to invest in new wells and other capacity sources. He stated, quote, if you try and raise money to drill holes, it's almost impossible to get that money. Even BlackRock's Larry Fink, who's been a vocal proponent of Wall Street embracing ESG, is concerned that outflows from the fossil fuel industry may be excessive. And analysts at JP Morgan echo the sentiments of the billionaire tycoons with their prediction that energy shortfall could be massive, adding, the industry could require up to $600 billion before 2030 to keep up with demand. As world leaders gathered in Glasgow for the COP26 summit to tackle climate change, Schwartzman said the rules needed to be stated clearly by governments so that society could work through a period of energy transition without unnecessary chaos. He said, there's unanimity that something should be done, but how you get from where we are today to a green world is utterly undefined. The COP26 International Climate Summit brought together global leaders from over 200 countries, along with climate negotiators, 
corporations, civil society, and international organizations to devise strategies to reduce glasshouse gas emissions that are causing global warming. However, the global energy crisis and pressure from other nations may jeopardize talks at the climate conference. Energy prices have tripled in certain European countries due to rising natural gas costs and coal shortages compared to the previous year. Bloomberg recently reported, quote, The risk is that the price spike makes emerging economies, for example India, more reluctant to ditch coal because that would threaten energy security. Meanwhile, Viktor Orban, the Hungarian prime minister, blamed the EU's green agenda for the price hikes. He said, The reason why the gas prices are up is the fault of the EU commission, so we have to change some regulations, otherwise everybody will suffer. Following the COP26 summit, French President Emmanuel Macron said, G20 countries have agreed to close coordination between producers and consumers on energy price issues. According to ANI, Macron told reporters after the G20 summit that the rise and validity in gas and oil prices have weakened the global economy. On energy challenges, he stressed the significance of coordination between producers and consumer states. And it's not just pressure from the ESG principles and the COP26 summit that are causing widespread problems for the energy industry. The world economy is still in a recovery period from the global impact of COVID-19. From higher prices at gas stations to increased heating costs, the energy crisis is set to hit all members of society, including its most vulnerable. Larry Fink, CEO of BlackRock, stepped into the debate adding, quote, short-term policies related to environmentalism in terms of restricting the supply of hydrocarbons has created energy inflation, and we're going to be living with that for some time. His sentiment is that inflation is likely to be a prolonged consequence rather than a short-term effect of the current climate. Describing this revolution, Fink said, getting to net zero carbon emissions by 2050 is going to require a revolution in the production of everything we produce and a revolution in everything we consume. The process of creating fuel, food, and construction material with all the needs that we have as human beings, it all has to be reinvented. And that's going to require a large amount of investment, a large amount of ingenuity, and a large amount of innovation. Could we be entering a green revolution where natural gases will phase out of production? But what are the consequences to individuals and businesses? As energy prices soar and tensions rise, could these shortages fuel the chaotic social unrest this billionaire predicts? Thank you for watching. Please like this video. It greatly helps the channel reach more savvy viewers like you who want to stay updated on today's economy. If you're not a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button with the bell notification to get notified every time we post a new video. Until next time.